11 of history's most notorious liars. From a shunned artist who turned to forgery, to the man who cost people billions of dollars with his financial falsities, here's some of history's most shockingly dishonest people. Number 11. Fab Morvan, Rob Pilatus, and Frank Farian. Millie Vanilli released an incredibly successful album in early 1989 that won Fab Morvan and Rob Pilatus, the members of the group, a Grammy for Best New Artist. The only problem was, they weren't the ones who were singing on the tracks. The giant lies started to unravel during a live MTV performance, when the backing track to the song they were supposedly singing started to skip. Though the incident was embarrassing, no one really cared too much that they were lip syncing, they weren't the only ones doing it, but the media began to take a closer look at the group's recordings and quickly realized the truth. Finally, in November of 1989, Frank Farian, the man who recorded the album, admitted to his huge lie and Millie Vanilli was stripped of their Grammy. Number 10. Han von Meegeren Henricus Antonius van Meegeren was born on October 10, 1889. Since he was a child, he had a love for Dutch Golden Age paintings. As a young adult, he stepped out into the world to become an artist. Critics, however, lambasted his works, calling them tired and derivative. Shunned by the art world, Van Meegeren decided to prove his abilities by forging paintings, pretending that they were done by some of the world's most famous artists. Finally, he found the success he so craved, especially in 1937, when he painted what was touted as a Vermeer. Summer at Imas fooled everyone, with established critics hailing it as a masterpiece. Eventually, Van Meegeren was caught red-handed and sentenced to one year in prison, where he died of a heart attack in 1947. Estimates say that the Dutch master forger duped buyers out of the equivalent of over $30 million. Number 9. Lance Armstrong Cheating happens often in sports, it's just part of the game and there are those that would do or say anything to gain a competitive advantage. It's imperative to note that the sport of cycling, like many professional sports, was riddled with steroid users. But none of those cheaters reached the heights of success, fame, or deception that Lance Armstrong did. He became an American icon while winning an unprecedented seven consecutive Tour de France races beginning in 1999. People always had their suspicions about Armstrong doping, but he denied the allegations at every turn, even throwing former friends and colleagues under the bus to keep his own name clean. Finally, in 2012, the disgraced cyclist was stripped of his titles before finally admitting his wrongdoing the next year in a tell-all, or what probably amounted to a tell-some interview with Oprah. Number 8. Anna Anderson Anderson spent her entire life maintaining that she was the Grand Duchess Anastasia, the youngest daughter of Tsar Nicholas II, head of the Russian royal family, that was murdered by Bolshevik revolutionaries in July 1918. She insisted that she was carried out of the bloodied basement where the entire family was shot to death and into the relative safety of Romania. Her tale convinced some people and received a good amount of public attention, though members of Anastasia's family and those that knew the girl vehemently denied Anderson's claims. Following the collapse of communism in the Soviet Union, the location of the Tsar and his entire family, including Anastasia, was revealed. Posthumous DNA tests of a lock of Anderson's hair confirmed that indeed her claimed identity had been a giant, lifelong ruse. Number 7. Frank Abagnale the arc of Frank Abagnale's life would look like a roller coaster, full of twists and turns. Abagnale mastered the art of check forgery and led a life of lies while claiming to be, at various times, a doctor, an airline pilot, and a lawyer, just to name a few. As good as he was at the art of deception, the law caught up with him several times and he spent stints in French, Swedish, and American prisons. After serving five years in United States federal penitentiaries, and trying to escape twice, he used his unique skill set in a more legal way. He helped banks uncover forged checks, eventually founding Abagnale & Associates, which advises businesses on fraud. His story became the stuff of legend and inspired the 2002 movie Catch Me If You Can. Number 6. Bill Clinton Though many people have largely forgiven Bill Clinton for his many lies and indiscretions, that doesn't change the fact that the former president showed a great willingness and propensity to lie in front of the nation he once led. Though he has been accused of several sexually reprehensible acts throughout the years, the one that landed him in really hot water was the Monica Lewinsky scandal. When allegations were brought forth that Clinton had an affair with Lewinsky, a White House intern, in the West Wing of the White House, he denied his butt off. In a famous address to the nation, he proclaimed, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Of course, he would later admit the opposite after surviving a failed impeachment attempt. Number 5. Kenneth Lay Lay was at the heart of the Enron scandal that led to the company's bankruptcy in 2001, which at the time was the biggest bankruptcy in U.S. history. It would cost 20,000 employees their jobs and many their life savings. All told, investors would lose billions of dollars. Lay became the CEO and chairman of Enron in 1989 and spent the next decade plus liquidating more than $300 million in Enron stock. He was indicted in 2004 and two years later in May 2006 was found guilty on six counts of conspiracy and fraud. Before his sentencing was to take place in October of that year, he died of a heart attack while vacationing in Aspen. Number 4. 
Richard Nixon. Nixon's first term as president of the United States actually went pretty well. He got the credit for pulling troops out of Vietnam and improved many foreign relations. His success seemed to lead to his re-election in 1972, but the Watergate scandal revealed that it was more than his initial triumphs that led to the favorable outcome. The Washington Post picked up on the fact that Nixon's administration had been involved in bugging the offices of political opponents and harassing activist groups. Nixon also had a secret taping system that recorded conversations in the Oval Office. Facing certain impeachment, Nixon famously addressed the nation before resigning as president on August 9, 1974. Number 3. Charles Ponzi The man whose name has become a catchphrase for fraudulent investment operations was born in Italy in 1882. With almost nothing to his name but hopes and dreams, he arrived in Boston, Massachusetts in 1903. He lost his job as a teller at Bank Zarossi after it went bankrupt. Ponzi was then sentenced to three years in a Quebec prison for forging a bad check, followed by a two-year stint after he was convicted of smuggling Italian immigrants across the border into the U.S. Finally, sometime around 1918, Ponzi got an idea to exchange international reply coupons from one country for more expensive stamps in the United States and then selling those stamps for a huge profit. As his illegitimate wealth grew, he started seeking investors to turn even higher profits by promising them outrageous returns. Rather than paying investors with actual profit, he would use money from other investors. The Boston Post began investigating his returns leading to his arrest on August 12, 1920. He was charged with 86 counts of mail fraud and owed an estimated 7 million bucks. The elaborate scheme would cost Ponzi 14 years in prison. Number 2. Benedict Arnold One of the most interesting figures in colonial U.S. history, Benedict Arnold is remembered as an American general who betrayed both his country and the oath of allegiance he signed in May of 1778 by defecting to the British just a year later. Born in Connecticut, Benedict Arnold spent most of his young life rising through the ranks of the colonial army, and thanks in part to a recommendation from George Washington, eventually became a brigadier general. Despite having great success in battle against the British, Arnold constantly fought with fellow generals. Personal issues within the colonial army and the promise of a lot of money, land, and pensions for himself and his family persuaded Arnold to turn his back on his newly formed country and become a British general, making him one of the most notorious traitors and liars in American history. Now for number one. But first, you can trust us when we tell you how much we appreciate our loyal subscribers, like Christopher Miller, who seemed to really enjoy 10 abandoned places overrun by Mother Nature. That was a fun video to make. Glad you liked it, and thanks so much for your feedback. Number one. Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff told some of the biggest, most financially costly lies of all time. His multi-billion dollar firm was nothing more than a giant Ponzi scheme. Madoff's reputation as a respected financier allowed him to convince wealthy people, like Steven Spielberg, to invest their savings while he falsely promised consistent profits in return. Finally, in 2008, he admitted his giant string of lies to his sons, who immediately informed authorities of their father's wrongdoing. Apparently, Madoff told investigators that he had squandered $50 billion of his investors' money. In March 2009, he pled guilty to 11 felony counts including securities fraud, money laundering, and perjury, and was sentenced to 150 years in prison. Today, the 79-year-old sits in a jail cell with no choice but to be content with knowing that he will never breathe a breath of free air for the rest of his days.